welcome back to the study. We're still in Mark chapter 5. I hope you've had a chance to get caught up if you haven't and see all the other videos prior to this. It kind of connects this gospel together and if we know the gospel of Mark well, we can go through Luke and Matthew much easier because they are what we call the three synoptic gospels. And the gospel of Mark was written first. We know that because the exact storyline of Mark is found in Matthew and Luke. Even though your Bible probably has Matthew before Mark, it's not a chronological Bible if it doesn't. And so we learn Mark first, and that's why we've chosen to go through the Gospel of Mark together. We just saw Jesus heal a demoniac, and we saw some neat things happen in and around that story that bring it alive more. And Jesus finally gets in a boat, and we pick up in Mark chapter 5, verse 21. And when Jesus had crossed over again in the boat to the other side, a large crowd gathered around him. And so he stayed by the seashore. One of the synagogue officials named Jairus came up and on seeing Jesus fell at his feet and implored him earnestly, saying, My little daughter is at the point of death. Please come and lay your hands on her so that she will get well and live. This in itself is a really unusually bold thing to happen. First of all, the synagogue of officials generally weren't on Jesus' team. Uh, it doesn't mean that they hated him particularly. It's just that he didn't fit the mold of classical Judaism, whether or not that was the Galilean, more conservative side of Judaism, or whether it was the more Judean, Hellenistic side of Judaism. Jesus didn't fit the mold. I wonder why. Um, it's because he wasn't what they were looking for, and he was exactly what they needed. And so many times in our life, <laughs> we don't know what we need, we know what we want. Well, this official knew what he wanted. He wanted his daughter to be better. And so he laid aside potentially and probably obvious biases, came and saw Jesus, and of course knew of his reputation, probably had even heard recently in the Decapolis, the, the ten cities where the healed demoniac went and proclaimed the gospel. And he might have heard that story, and he bumped into this situation here, and he literally gets down in front of Jesus and says, can you do this? Can you do this one for me? Can you come and heal my daughter? If you lay your hands, you know, he knew the power in Christ and he wanted the power. Unlike some of the people in that one city we talked about earlier, he knew the power of Christ to come. He just simply touch his daughter and his daughter would be better. He didn't say, you know, would you come and pray over her? Would you come and anoint her with oil? Would you come and do all the Jewish rituals and see if it works? He said, just come and touch her, lay your hands on her, and she will get well and live. This was an act of faith being put into words for Jesus. And so, verse 24, Jesus it says, and he, Jesus, went off with him, that synagogue official, and a large crowd was following him and pressing in on him. In other words, these are the people that gathered there around the shore when he came up. And they were all gathered around Jesus. And of course, why were they gathering around Jesus? Well, they were gathering around Christ because they wanted something. They wanted the power. They wanted the healing. They wanted the free meals. Whatever it was, Jesus was dishing out, handing out, doing spiritually, doing for them to heal them. They were there to get. They were not there to become Christians, and we often don't see that, and that's what most people in North America are who come to church. They are like this crowd pressing in on Jesus. Yeah, they, they know who Jesus is. They've heard what he's done, but they're there to get, not to do the gospel of the kingdom. And they're pressing in on him here, and it says in verse 25, and a woman who had had a hemorrhage for 12 years, in other words, had been bleeding internally, <clears throat> and she endured much at the hands of many physicians, and had spent all she had had, and was not helped at all, but rather had grown worse. And after hearing about Jesus, she came up in the crowd behind him and touched his 
garments, his cloak. <clears throat> and it's interesting, he says, for she thought in, in her mind. She, her mind was doing the right kind of things here. When we are Christians, Paul says, we are to be transformed in our mind, Romans chapter 12. This lady was transformed in her mind because she was thinking, right? She says, if I just touch his garments, I will get well. She didn't need a relationship, even though she really did, but she didn't see it as that. She saw Jesus as representing what exactly she needed for healing. And she knew that he was genuine. She realized this by her faith, and we'll see that here just in a second. She said, she, before she thought, if I just touch his garments, I will get well. And immediately the flow of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her affliction. <clears throat> her mindset was right. She did what she knew was right. She was thinking right. Something, And she wasn't there just to get, but she was there because she knew who Jesus really was. She knew that he could do that. And immediately the flow, or excuse me, verse 30, immediately Jesus, perceiving in himself that the power proceeded from him, had gone forth, turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? Well, that's kind of like, you know, um, a ridiculous question because obviously there were people all around him and probably many of them were bumping up against him and touching him and yet he felt because of this lady's faith that power go out of him it wasn't because they were just coming in to get around and get close and touch him and and, and you know and, and try to be his buddy there was a faith issue involved here and the disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you, and you say, Who touched me? Come on. And he looked around to see the woman who had done this. But the woman, fearing and trembling, aware, aware of what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. <clears throat> There's an element of confession here that is very good for us. Some people say we don't confess anymore because we're just Christians and that's the way it is and we're covered. Oh, we are covered. But we need to speak the truth. And this lady was doing that. And he said to her, daughter, your faith, not his, not Jesus' faith, your faith has made you well. What you expressed by faith in Jesus Christ made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Wow. You know what? Jesus really didn't do anything but be Jesus. He didn't look around and say, you over there. Come up here. I'm going to heal you. He, he was just being Jesus, and she knew who he was. And she extended great, or she extended her faith in an act that she was certain would transform her more. And believe me, I have no doubt this lady went out and preached the gospel too, just like the demoniac Jesus healed a few verses earlier. The question we have to ask is, do we have that kind of faith? Or are we just part of the crowd trying to get, get, get? And are we transformed in our mind to really know how to express faith in Christ? And I think if we are really honest with ourselves, that's something we all need to improve in our spiritual journey with Jesus Christ.